Welcome to Unit 2, uh, Foundations 10 students. We're going to start in uh, right away with a video to do with radicals and exponents, specifically talking about square and cube roots. Let's start with um, so vo some vocabulary. What in the world is a square or a cube? If I ask you to, that was good, square 3. What do I mean if I say to square something? That's bugging me. i got to fix that. You all know what that means. To square 3 means to take 3 times itself. Why? It's tied to the idea of a square. If I have a square whose dimension is 3, meaning every side is 3, and I ask you how big it is, if I make a square that's 3, we know to find that area inside of here is 3 squared, which is 9. What's it mean to cube something? Same idea, only instead of coming at, turning it into a square, what happens if I have a cube that is 3 on each side? And then we're talking about what's the volume of that cube? And again, you know that to find the, uh, the volume of a rectangular prism like this would be length times width times height, or 3 times 3 times 3, 3 cubed, which is 27. That's all fine and good. What about this root word on the end of here? That's what's new in this unit. Rather than squaring things and cubing things, we're going to undo it. We're going to be looking at what happens if we take the root of something. Symbols. A square root. You probably already know what that looks like. That means find the square root of 9, and you know that that's 3. Square root of 25 is 5. None of that's new to you. Um, so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time talking about it. Know that those things underneath of there are technically called perfect squares. 9 and 25 are perfect squares since they do have nice, neat, perfect square roots. On the other hand, if I ask you, what is the square root of 15? What number times itself is 15? You can't give me an answer. These are exact because these things under here are perfect squares. Now, I don't want to keep calling them these things under here. So, when we talk about a root, the number underneath here is called the radicand. Why? That is tied to a Latin word uh, that has a special uh, meaning. It means root. And, of course, we're finding roots. And through time, that has uh, evolved to call this whole thing a radical. This whole thing is called a radical. The, th the number underneath is called your radicand. And then sometimes there is a little number right here. If there's a number there, that's called an index. When there is no index, which is probably what you've seen for the most part, that means that your index is 2. So this square root of 121 technically has a 2 there. We don't write it because we all know that it's a 2. The square root of 121 is 11. If I want to talk about a different root, like the cube root, I have to put that in there. And know that, um, hang on, the cube root of 27, of course, is 3. The cube root of 64 is not the same as if I write it this way. Be careful. If you want that number to be in the notch, to be the little index, it has to be tiny and it has to be in the little v. If you write it out front, this means something totally different. The cube root of 64 is 4. Why? Because 4 cubed is 64. On the other hand, this says 3 times the square root of 64. This is 3 times 8. Notice the root sign disappeared when I found the square root, but I put brackets so that I remember this means I'm supposed to multiply. 
is 24. 24, this one was 64. Be careful when you put that uh, index as compared to a coefficient or a number in front. They have very different meaning. Now go back and read through those notes. Give some questions a try. Remember, if you need help, you should be contacting your teacher.